up. Come on, guys. They just cut the factory harness. Sweet. Hopefully when you guys take your dash off, you don't see this. Now what you should do is... Welcome to Not Enough Projects. Today we are going to be doing a stereo upgrade in our NA Miata. This thing's got a pretty gimmicky aftermarket radio that the previous owner installed. You can see it's got tweeters. I don't think they actually do anything. And they did a really good job installing this equalizer in the head unit. We're going to upgrade the door speakers and we're going to add in headrest speakers to the driver's seat. So let's get to it. Let's go over the components we're going to install. So for the head unit, we've just got one of these kind of no-name China CarPlay head units. They work okay, I've used them in the past. We'll see how this one does. We'll link it in the description. For the headrest speakers, uh, we have these kickers that are three and a half inches. You can fit just about any three and a half inch speaker into the headrest from what I understand. These are just a good price and they sound okay from what I've heard. For the door speakers, we've got these JBLs. Again, they were, they're like mid range. They are cheap enough, but they're not total garbage. So we'll see how this all works out together. All right, so to replace the head unit, we're gonna need to remove the whole center console and dash. So we're gonna take out the ashtray. You see there's a Phillips head screw down here. There are two Phillips head screws. There's one here and one at the same place on the driver's side. Before we get too far, let's go ahead and do an audio comparison, even though it's kind of hard to tell through YouTube. Okay, so here we are. Hopefully this is not copyright. Oh, jeez. You can see it, it's auto volume. It puts it at what it thinks you want it to be at. Yeah, it's janky and it doesn't sound that good. <laughs> I think it's safe to say that now. All right, now I'm gonna go into the center console. There's two Phillips head screws in here. Okay, now I'm gonna take off shift knob and the whole center console comes out. There's a connector down here, which wasn't connected for us. I think it goes to a bulb in the center console. So I'm gonna set that aside. Next, we got this Phillips head screw here, which is again loose. All right, so now we need to remove the center vents. So we're just gonna grab here, just pry gently with our screwdriver. There it goes. Now that we have the vents out, we can get the last screws. They are way up in here, right there. There are connectors up top here for the headlight switch and for the emergency flashers. Oh boy. Oh, come on guys. They just cut the factory harness. Sweet. Okay, so we're just taking off this bracket. That's holding the stereo in place. Now that, that piece of junk is out, let's take this one. I don't even understand what's going on here. Hopefully when you guys take your dash off, you don't see this because what they did is they cut off the factory connector and just spliced directly in to the harness. So that is awesome. Now that we've got the head unit out, let's go ahead and take off these speakers. They just drilled them right into the A pillar, so that's awesome. Oh yeah, they did a really good job. Oh yeah, no wonder the sound quality was so good. We're gonna cut away all of the old junk wiring harness. You can see they did a pretty good hack job on this. I think from the factory these had two connectors, one for the headrest speakers, which they cut away for some reason and didn't even use, and one for the rest, which is cut. Now we could repair this if we wanted to, uh, but I think we're just gonna continue on with the hackery and just do what they did, I guess, because at this point we are missing this connector, so we're gonna have to do it on these anyways. Okay, we got our wiring harness from the new head unit. You're gonna need the instructions because the colors are all they're fairly standard, but they're different for each radio. Now, what you should do is you should go on Amazon and get the NA Miata wiring harness kit that plugs into these factory connectors and the one that they cut off for no reason. And then you wire that to this. So you don't even have to touch the factory harness at all and it just plugs straight in. That's the way you should do it. We're gonna have to do hack job because they already hack jobbed it. So it is what it is. 
Apparently the wire coloring for the door speakers can be inconsistent through the NA years. And since it's already all cut off the connector, I'm just gonna pop off the door panels so we know exactly what color the door speakers have running to them. Okay, to take the door panel off, we need to first take it off this Phillips head. That bezel comes off. Now we're gonna pop off this access panel here. All right, next we're gonna pop off this little cover. It's not in there very hard. And there's a Phillips head screw in there. Okay, now we have to take off the two screws down here. Now we have the armrest off. Okay, now we need to remove the window crank. It can be a little bit tricky because there's a C-clip holding it on. A lot of guys will put a piece of string behind and use it to take the clip off. You can do that. I'm just gonna use this pick. The ends of the clip should be over here and you just pull back. Off it comes, here's the clip I was talking about. So what I was doing is I was putting the pick on the clip like this, pulling back so that the clip came off the handle. Now with the handle off, we shouldn't have anything else hanging us up, except for the clips here at the bottom. There we are. So you can see we have the factory speakers in here still. Crappy cardboard cones. So we're gonna definitely gonna have a big upgrade here. So let's start by taking the speaker off. Man, that connector really don't want to come out. Luckily, we don't care about the speaker because it, it's kind of a piece of junk. All right, now we can tell what colors we are dealing with for the left-hand door speaker. Red, white, and red, green. Now we're gonna need to go to the other side and figure out what colors those have. Looks like we got red, green, and red, white. So it's a little confusing. Both doors at the door have red, green, red, white wiring, but the left-hand door goes to red, green, red, white over here. The right-hand door goes to blue and blue-yellow. So, we're gonna make red-green our positive, which it's totally arbitrary, you can do it either way, but I think from the factory, red-green is positive, red-white is negative, so we're gonna stick with that. And then we're gonna use a multimeter to make sure that I think our blue-yellow should be the positive connection and the blue solid should just be the negative connection. And obviously, the left-hand door should be the same with blue green is positive. All right, here's your Harbor Freight Freebie multimeter. Got one probe on red green. No, I think blue yellow should be our. Yep, you can see there's continuity. I don't actually trust the ohm reading on this thing, but it's okay. And we go check this one. No continuity. Yep. Okay, so red green is positive over here, and blue yellow is positive over here. So now. Finally, we're ready to start wiring up the head unit harness. So if you're not an idiot, unlike the previous owner of this fine automobile, you will have a stereo wiring harness. And it should be very easy for you to do this because the, the bag that it comes in will have a wiring diagram on it. That'll tell you exactly what every color on the harness does. And then you'll just solder it directly to the harness for the new head unit. Now, since the previous owner cut off the connectors, we have to go to the factory wiring harness and solder it directly into here. So that's what I'm gonna do now. And that's why we have to do this in the car. Okay, we're gonna start with our battery plus, and it's not a bad idea to unhook the battery while you're doing this, because this wire is live all the time. I also like to use heat shrink and solder, but you can crimp them with these connectors. They work, but I like soldering better. My favorite way to splice wires before you solder. It's called the Lyman splice. You can see we've already got a good connection before we even solder. Make sure our heat shrink still fits. I always see people go crazy on the solder where it's like cooling over the wires. You really don't need that. You just need to wet all the strands of copper like we have here and that's more than good enough. So let that cool off a second and then we'll put the heat shrink on. Now we'll do our ignition. So this is key on power. This is how the head unit knows when to turn on. There it is. Next we'll do our ground. And what crappy radio insulation wouldn't be complete without a scotch lock? Okay, next we're gonna do the illumination wire, which is orange on this head unit, and that goes into the red-black wire on the Miata harness. 
The red wire also corresponds with illumination, but that gets a variable signal, and that's how when you turn the dial, the lights slowly dim or brighten. This one is just a signal where if the headlights are on, it puts 12 volts, and the head unit knows to dim. So I'll solder that up. Okay, that should be just about all of our non-speaker connections. So now we need to attach our speakers to the new stereo harness. On this stereo, the left door speaker is white, positive, black, white, black, negative. And we're doing red, green, positive. So we're just gonna start this up like the other ones. Now we had the front left speaker wires hooked up. Now we're gonna go front right, or the door speakers. Uh, it looks like the pigtails from the old head unit have the same colors. I guess it's kind of standard, but if you remember, blue, yellow is positive, which is gray. Looks like the old one was like that too. So we'll just hook that up. Okay, now we need to hook up the rear speaker, which is purple, purple, black, green, green, black on the new stereo harness. So nice of the old people to cut it off so it was ready for us. So we're gonna make blue, yellow, the positive for the right-hand side headrest speaker. And we'll make red, yellow, the positive for the left-hand side. Really hate doing this to the factory harness. Okay, so the last wire that we really need to be worried about right now is this pink wire, which is the parking brake wire. Pretty much all head units are gonna have some variant of this, especially if they're the newer ones that do CarPlay and that kind of thing. I don't even think the Miata has a brake wire up here so we are just going to ground it so the car thinks it's always in park and also that'll give us access to some features that you're not normally allowed to be using when you're driving let's go ahead and plug in the head unit make sure everything works and then we'll heat shrink all this tubing up okay all right here we go Seems like it works. Obviously you can't test the speakers yet because there are no speakers, but it looks pretty good. Here's our new speaker. Now, you will probably run into this no matter what kind of speaker you choose. The mounting holes are not gonna line up because it just differs with every manufacturer. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna line up one of these holes. Try to figure out which one fits best with all the other ones. It's not bad, yeah, I'll do that. Then we're gonna put in the screw over here. Obviously we're not wired up yet, we're just mocking it up. Held in place, now we're gonna get the drill. We're gonna drill some pilot holes, and then we're gonna put the sheet metal screws in. Came with these panel clips, so maybe we'll drill a hole just a little oversized, and we can just use these. It's a little bit nicer than screwing into the sheet metal. I think these other ones we're just gonna mark, and then we will take the speaker off from the drill. We need to end up cutting the end off these. Not quite sitting down flush, but we'll see. All right, I'm happy with that. Well, that is mounted. We have all four screws in there, nice and secure. It did come with some backing foam that we'll put on, and we also need to finish wiring it up. So we'll pop it back out and we can do that. Okay, we're gonna try to harvest the factory connector so we don't have to cut into that wiring. Now we just have to mangle the connections inside the speaker. There we go. There is our connector. All right, I think we lucked out, and it's actually the exact width we need. So we, can, we don't have to get wires on here and just solder that directly on. I do just need to figure out the polarity. So we're going to put that back in. It looks like this one is red, white, red, green is our positive. So this is positive right here. Now it's pretty faint on this speaker. There's a plus right there and a negative right there. So it looks like the smaller terminal is the negative. All right, so we're just going to use the iron. To take off all this old crappy solder. Now we're just going to solder the connector to the speaker. Sometimes I'm just too much of a genius. I say most of the time. <laughs> okay, now we're just gonna put this foam to isolate the speaker from the body, I guess. Now we should be good to plug our speaker in. Beautiful. Make sure we don't have anything sticking on there. Okay, now we're just gonna test to make sure that this speaker we put in just now is working. Good sounding static. 
Okay, now we're gonna get the speaker in on the other side. It's gonna be the exact same thing. So we're gonna skip it. Okay, now we've got the door speaker squared away. And we're going to switch gears to the headrest speakers. So I believe every NA Miata has this. You have this zipper here. You just fold back the leather. There you go. And then you get access. And there's even holes in the foam for the speaker. Okay, so here is one of our three and a half inch speakers that are gonna go in. Again, everything will be linked in the description if you're interested in doing this yourself. So, should just wedge in here without needing to modify it really. Oh yeah, that's gonna work out great. Okay, so we just need to get the wiring squared away. There's already a relief in the foam back here where the wires will come down through the seat back. We do need to poke a hole through to the back. That's okay. We didn't really have any speaker wire I would want to use, so we're just using the leftover wire harness, is plural, for the Fiero project. Check that out if you're interested in that. Swap the engine in there. So we just need to choose some colors that are unique. We should be good to go. So now we are just gonna run the wire through a hole that we're gonna poke in the foam. Okay, now before we get too far, we're gonna put the harness that came with the speakers on. They'll hook up nicely. So for the right side, we're gonna do pink as positive, which obviously ideally you'd get the harness from a donor Miata that had these, but we don't have that option right now, so that's what we're doing. All right, I got these soldered up. Let's go ahead and heat shrink them. Let's see if we can feed these down with the seat back. We need a stick or something to poke through. Now we need to route these down and under the seat. Okay, so we need to make sure that the seat has enough slack to go in the full range of movement. So we've got it all the way forward on the back and all the way back on the actual seat. So now we have this connector down here, which again, all NA Miata should have. Unfortunately, I don't actually have the proper connector and I wasn't able to source it. So we're gonna have to cut it off and splice the wires in, or you could cut it off and add your own four pin connector. That would work great too. All right, we've got everything connected down below under the seat. So now we just need to put the speakers in up here. Uh, before we hook up the other one, I'm gonna double check that we have the stereo hooked up correctly. Yep. Got a little excited in this before we started the camera, but you just gotta kind of manhandle it on. Feels the same as the other side, except now there's speakers in there. So now we are just gonna need to tidy everything up and get it put back together. We do need a dash kit to get the radio to fit correctly in the dash. This is the kit you need if you have a 97. Let's see, what's the model number? It's a Metra 997505. I guess you can get it from Best Buy or Amazon or whatever. But yeah, so we'll get that all set up and bring you back once you got it in. So we've got the side brackets on and then this bezel just pops in. And then what holds this in are these tabs. So you have to put dash on first. which we'll need to screw everything in. I did heat shrink everything earlier. I don't think we covered that. There we go. That doesn't look bad at all. Way better than just flopping around in there, that's for sure. All right, now we just need to put everything in the dash together, reverse of installation. You can just rewatch that if you can't figure it out. And the door panel, same thing. Should be reverse of installation, just real easy. Everything pops back in place, put the screws back in place, and it's good to go. So we'll bring you back when you're ready for the final sound test. All right, everything is buttoned up. Uh, so now really the only thing is to just make sure everything's working, make sure everything sounds good. We did play around with the EQ a little bit. I think we got it pretty dialed in. So we'll see how it does with full wind noise. We got the top down, it's a nice evening. So let's see what happens. Well, I guess we should play some music, huh? 
This is supposedly all copyright free music, so I don't know how any of it's going to sound. speakers definitely help a ton, which makes sense because, you know, it's right by your ears. Before, you could not hear the stereo at all at speed. It was just muffled, muddy, nothingness. So, definitely a huge improvement there. We'll drive around a little bit and just see how it does. Just realized we forgot to take the plastic off the screen, so let's go ahead and peel that off now. Yeah, it definitely looks a lot better. 